Guys, I'm thinking we have a lot of tier 4s now, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we totally do. And sometimes it's really difficult to choose who your next tier 4 is when you just look at all these things. You look at all these guys, everyone says all the tier 4s are really good. Yeah, that's true, like, they're all really hyped up. Uh, so what if there was a better way? What if there was another way? What if I could throw even more data and spreadsheets at you? Well, fear not, because I'm not going to be ordering 55 hamburgers. What I am going to be doing is showing you the new tier 4 giga guide. Huge shout out to Abaddon, by the way. I basically ripped off his idea. Uh, he had this idea and he has tracked this for much longer than I have. So kudos to you, Abaddon. Thank you so much for showing me the ways of the spreadsheet uh, gods. Um, and essentially, this spreadsheet is broken down into two lists. And I will be copying this into the mega guide. So if you don't see it there just yet, uh, don't panic. It will be there shortly. But we have the guide on the left, which is my subjective ranking. Okay, my subjective ranking of these characters. And then we have the guide on the right, closer to me here, which is an objective ranking of the characters based on how many stages they are eligible for in World Boss Legend. So you have both things of value to you. And now we'll just go through and break down each one of them uh, so we can talk about it a little bit more and we can kind of zoom in a little bit so that it's a little bit easier for y'all to see. So starting us off with, oh, and it includes Spider-Gwen, by the way. Yes, we are including Spider-Gwen. Uh, we'll talk about her in just a minute. Uh, I know she hasn't been announced as a tier four yet, but it's it's basically in the bag here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a time traveler slash net marble CEO, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I know I know it's coming. So uh, as far as this objective ranking goes here, not not necessarily ranking, but it is ranked in terms of how many total stages they are available for for all World Boss Legends, including the new Purple Kang. So the way that this works is when you see a number here like Thanos 5 for Null, that means that you take that number 5 and you multiply it by 5, and that means Thanos is available for 25 stages or 5 different stage requirements for Null. Now, none of these rankings and none of these numbers include the stage 1 to 9 when there's no restriction, because that's just redundant to list that, and everyone is available for those stages, so it wouldn't make a difference on this ranking. But as you can see here, um, it's a pretty stark contrast between the ones at the top. So, let's say Shadow Shell, we know for sure she is available for 26 uh, different stage requirements, right? So, you multiply that by 5, she's available for over 100, over 125, I should say. Um, different world boss legend stages and then you scroll down to the bottom and poor Adam Warlock is only available for 12 that's less than half so from purely a world boss legend perspective right if you're just looking at world boss legend and you're just looking at how many stages they're available for if you want to climb and if you want that variety uh, you know Shadow Shell represents more than double the value of Adam Warlock for that specific piece of content that is not necessarily meaningful to everyone, and of course that doesn't capture the full value of Adam Warlock, but that's really meaningful for some players if that's really what they want to focus on. Like, that matters a lot. Now, you will see Jean Grey down here at the bottom at 13, and that is correct, right? I've double-checked the math here. She's not available for very many World Boss Legend stages currently. Um, of course, that again, that doesn't represent her full value, but it is something to consider if you want a character to climb for specific content. I don't think any of these rankings and any of this information should necessarily affect the tier list, but it is something that I take into consideration when I make the tier list, right? But, you know, regardless of how many stage, for example, in, in Jean Grey's case, regardless of the number of stages she's available for, she is so dominant in those stages and everywhere else that it, it basically does not matter, right? So I would still say Jean Grey is a much better tier 4 than Shadow Shell. Um, it's just that she's available for half as many World Boss Legend stages because the combination of villain, universal, uh, female, mutant is just not very often uh, listed in, in any sort of combination. Now, a question I know a lot of you guys are going to have for me, if you look at a character like Iron Man, you say, well, Iron Man's only available for 100 stages? Because you take that 20 and you multiply it by 5. That, that seems off, Alex. Aren't you always touting Iron Man as this amazing hybrid between a blast hero and a blast villain? Well, yes, but for this list, no. And the reason for that is there are a couple of other characters like Namor, like Hulk, like Captain America, who do flip-flop or switch from hero to villain. Or, 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 and there's some, a couple of other things, like even Wolverine has a villain uniform. However, those uniforms suck mega balls, and that's a new term I'm coining, mega balls. Uh, so it would be misleading for me to list Iron Man's, but not list any of the other ones, because they technically have villain uniforms. And heck, Captain America technically has a female combat hero uniform. 
And then it gets really messy because although Captain America would be available for a lot more stages, there's no way in high hell that he's going to be usable on any of those stages. That combat hero stage, right? That, that combat female uh, Captain America sucks, right? Just in the same way that the villain Wolverine uniform sucks, right? I'm pretty sure it's a, a villain uni Wolverine uniform. But anyways, you, you catch my drift here, right? Now, there are a couple of stages. There are a couple of stage requirements that Iron Man could be here, could be listed here for, but it's not really going to affect his ranking too much. He's going to pump him up to like 22 or 23. I think he's still in a reasonably good position, so I'm only counting his latest uniform, and that is the rule I'm following for all of these, just to keep it as simple and as, you know, as simple as possible and as least confusing as possible. Now, you're probably wondering, you probably have two more questions if you're looking at this earnestly here. Number one, why the hell is Spider-Gwen here? And holy shit, she's all the way at the top. Well, what I did was I took Spider-Gwen's initial uh, abilities that are listed in-game with her old uniform. Obviously not her newest uniform because that is a villain uniform where she gets the symbiote. So that, that's totally different, right? She turns into a villain, obviously. She has the, she has the symbiote ability. It's not the same. She's not going to have the symbiote ability with her new uniform. It's probably, if I had to guess, it's going to be the same as this. She's going to get leadership. She's going to get agility. And then she's going to get spider sense. Now, I don't know this to be true, but I am speculating that it is going to be true. And if she does retain all of those abilities, leadership, agility, and spider, spider sense doesn't matter. But if she retains leadership and agility, and if she maintains a status as a human female speed hero, which she should, then these are going to be the breakdowns. And as you can see, the value is astronomical, right? She even blitzes Shadow Shell because of the ability, uh, because of the uh, leadership ability that Shadow Shell does not have. You can see there, it makes her available for three more sets of restrictions. That is insane. That's almost 150. I repeat, that's 145 World Boss Legend stages. That is humongous. That's insane. That's so much value. Uh, so yeah, if Spider Gwen's really good for PVE. You know, you know who I'm going to be tier 4-ing next. The other question I think you have is these lines here. So these lines delineate the average middle of these rankings. If you take the lowest of 12 and you take the highest, I actually did 26. I don't think, I actually, actually, maybe I did 29. Actually, I think I did 29. If you take, anyways, if you take the highest and the lowest, you add them together, you divide it by 2, you're going to get 21. So this represents these characters here and, and the ones close to them like Iron Man and Moon Knight. These represent sort of the middle in terms of value. Uh, when you go even higher, you're going to get some really spicy value. That doesn't necessarily mean the character is best for you. That doesn't mean the character is easy to play in the case of Carnage and Octopus. Um, but it does mean that the character gives you more value for climbing. Okay, but I, you should still and I still recommend referring to specific character guides before you make a final decision on a tier four. This is just to help you if you want to do a specific piece of content. Like, let's say, you know what? I really want to get to stage 100 of Null for whatever reason, right? So you're like, oh, let's do this. I'm, You know, Hulk is going to actually present way more value for me than Storm. And his uniform is not uh, paywall. Or, or you know what? Uh, Dr. Octopus is going to provide more value than Carnage. So I'm going to go with Dr. Octopus tier four. There may be other reasons to tier four one of these characters over another, but you sort of get the point. Or you take Gene, for example. Wow, Dr. Octopus is available for six different restrictions of Gene, but Thanos is only available for two? I know who I'm going to tier four next. You sort of get the point here. So it's, it's just to help you to quickly compare these characters in terms of restrictions and also to see the sort of running tally on how valuable they can be for climbing. So that answers this sort of uh, right side guide, which is the objective ranking uh, based on how many stages they're available for. Then when we go over to this side, this is where people are going to be upset. I'm going to be called, uh, you know, a criminal or a fraud or whatever. And we're going to look at a different ranking. Now, this ranking is alphabetical, except for except for Wolverine, because I'm a dumbass and I put him next to Gene. Um, so this is alphabetical. This is not ranked from best to worst, highest to lowest. Um, I may end up doing that in the future if you guys prefer it to be ranked highest to lowest. But for now, it is alphabetical just so that it's very easy to find the character that you're looking for, except for Wolverine. Um, and this basically just ranks, in my opinion, how good they are for different content. There's OK, which is OK is good. So I should probably I should probably change this. OK is good. Or sorry. <laughs> one is good. Two is great. Uh, oh shit. Two is great. Um, and then three is amazing. And then four is meta. But that's a PVP only number. So you can't hit a four in any of the other categories. Now, you're probably asking, why did you do that, Alex? That sounds stupid and needlessly complicated. Well, it may be both of those things, but 
PvP is only listed once here, despite the fact that there are now three mainline PvP game modes. Timeline Battle, uh, Otherworld Battle, and Alliance Conquest. So rather than listing those game modes out separately and, and creating like unnecessarily corny nuance, um, I decided to just make this number here. I actually might even crank this up to a five because it's difficult to accurately reflect the value of PvP only characters, PvP only tier fours. And if I didn't do this, if I didn't have the four here, then all of the PvP, the good PvP characters would be statistically lower and skewed low uh, based on anything else. Now this list, has its flaws like i said that might be a flaw for some people if they're really into pvp uh the abx abl being listed as separate uh columns can also be a flaw for some players if they're not really into abx and abl at a high level i decided to delineate them because characters that are not good for one could be good for the other and vice versa whereas a character that's really good for timeline battle it's very rare that they're just shit for conquest and shit for other world battle usually they have sort of um measurably similar value for these other game modes these, these other pvp game modes like adam warlock he's just amazing across the board in all these pvp game modes so he gets a four carnage is amazing in all these game modes uh, pvp game modes so he gets a four across the board but then you take a look at abx and abl and a really good example shadow shell really good for abl pretty pretty dog shit for abx I realized as i was talking about shadow shell that i should have frozen the top row so here you go much better example here, much more visually, uh, you know, complete. Uh, char some characters are just really good for one game mode, but not really good for another, whereas it doesn't really translate uh, as much into PvP, where if a character struggles in PvP in one PvP game mode, chances are they're going to struggle in all of the PvP game mode. So that is why I did the list this way. There is quite a lot of thought that goes into it, but I do still struggle with the ranking sometimes. I do think some of them are accurate. I do think some of them feel a little off. Um, for example, Shadow Shell being an 11 feels a little low to me. Professor X being a 13 feels a little bit high to me. Same thing with Magneto. Um, but there are obvious, the, the obvious ones that stand out. Jean Grey being a 17 is just, yeah, that makes sense, right? She just dominates, she dominates across the board for content. Um, whereas someone like Black Widow, despite holding on, holding on, in ABX and ABL uh, struggles otherwise, right? She gets out at tier four. She gets outclassed by a level 70 or level 80 Miles Morales, which is pretty embarrassing. Um, not really much value for GBR, quite slow there. Not much value for farming. Maybe she'll pick up value in PVP once more people swap her over to like a greed build or, or like an authority or something like that. So this, this ranking is obviously could be subject to change, but I, I do think that uh, it gives you a little bit more insight into maybe how I see these characters and maybe if you're looking for a character for a specific piece of content this can sort of put you in the right direction i don't want i mean you can use this list however you want right you can just meme on me um if you if you really want to spider gwen's a question mark guys and she's also out of ranking in terms of um the the, uh, the alphabetical but uh, a couple of things here one do you question do you want me to rank these characters by their totals or do you want me to keep it alphabetical here that's the first question. These these lists, by the way, are never going to line up. So, yeah. Uh, and then two, the second question uh, is, or that second, second thing is not a question. It's more of a, a request here. Uh, don't use this as the only way you decide to tier four a character. Please don't do that. In general, you should never make a big decision based on one piece of information. So just take that as like a corny life lesson from a guy you didn't ask for life lessons from. Uh, but essentially, uh, this is not a complete enough picture, in my opinion. I think this is a really good companion to other content and, uh, and other pieces of information, like a written guide or a video or, or whatever, a tier list. Um, but I don't think this paints the full picture. It's just a fun little thing to do. I like to keep track of it. I like to update these. I like to see the numbers and the spreadsheets. And I just like the way I designed it uh, based on Amadons, of course, uh, with the green here on the on the right side. So, yeah. That's the thing I wanted to show you guys. I've, I've, I've worked on it. Like, I've had this up for months, and I never showed you guys, so I wanted to show you guys. Anyways, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.